Hi there, it's Johnny Moneto, World of Warships. Today it's about kiting. Kiting is a technique in uh, World of Warships that can help you um, have better results in your games, that can give you an advantage uh, in, uh, if, you, if you're keen on winning, or if you're keen on farming damage, then kiting should be something that you should know how to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And uh, I, I picked this video because I think this is a very, very good example to show you what it actually is. This obviously is not aimed at the more advanced players, the already skillful players, they should already know. But if you have never heard of kiting, then have a look because I explain what it is. If you have heard of kiting, but you're not 100% sure what it is, again, have a look you will be served here and uh, if you think you know what kiting is but you just want to make sure that you actually got it get it right then also stay tuned in this video additionally we will also see a huge difference between kiting and another technique uh, in this case bow tanking and you will see uh, the clear advantages in which situation kiting is just superior to bow tanking and I will also show you how to be successful in kiting, but also when to stop kiting. All right, this battle is a rank battle and I'm playing everybody's darling, the Thunderer. And Thunderer is an extremely good ship for kiting um, because it can shoot very nicely and relatively accurate, has pretty good concealment and some other nifty advantages. Uh, another battleship that is very good is its sibling Conqueror and then there are cruisers like the heavy Japanese cruisers and some other ships but basically you can really do kiting with every single ship that you have. I play Thunderer, we go to the BC line and uh, I have two Des Moines with me or better I will support the two Des Moines that we have and later on, currently we don't know it, but later on we will find out that um, on the enemy side um, they have also two cruisers, but they have two battleships instead of only just one, instead of only just me. And that would be your first clue when to actually kite the enemy, and that is when the enemy has superior forces. Now, especially in this battle, um, or in this kind of battle where we have one part of our fleet on one side and the other part on the other side and it might be the same for the enemy. You have basically two halves of the map and they don't influence each other too much. And um, since the enemy has superior forces they probably will be eager to use that superior firepower to push forward and get the cap that we just took here, our home cap. Here's the first ship. Small mistake from my side, should have AP loaded here. Switch to HE too soon, so that's no good. Um, but anyway, I'm venturing forward because we're still trying to find out what it is. As soon as I get the necessary information that there's four ships on the other side against our three ships that we have here, um, I make up my mind that it's better to kite here. And the idea is that I try to be a pain in the ass for the enemy, to delay the push of the enemy fleet as much as possible without getting killed. And the way to do this is to actually turn the ship around. Currently I'm facing with a bow towards the enemy. But after this shot I will try to get closer to this island and use this island a little bit as cover to do my turn. However, um, since I'm not doing this so often in the Thunderer, I underestimate a little bit how long it takes for her to turn. Here I'm lucky, the Kurfus couldn't got bigger damage on me. And on the other side of the island, it's not that Moskva that I should be worried about, it's more the Montana that we see now. Um, if she would choose to shoot me here, 
full broadside that could hurt a lot so that was also very risky for my side but the Des Moines gets all the heat and here we can already see a difference the Des Moines a little bit aggressive and getting focus fired should disengage should try to hide behind the island doesn't do that so now I'm trying to take some of the heat from my Des Moines to give him some sort of break and I'm already in the kiting position which means I'm putting my stern towards the enemy now even more and now I'm even angling more uh, the stern of course is the rear of the ship and then I shoot over my shoulder I shoot backwards let's say yeah this is this is the first step of kiting show your stern to the enemy and then shoot back over your shoulder I will now take a decision that I switch my guns from one side to the other. Now I have them uh, over my starboard shoulder. And I see if I continue this path, I will basically end up in the corner on A10. And that will be a death sentence for me. It's probably not so good. Um, in this case, it is better to kite away in another direction. So I turn my ship around. And I also turn the guns around and I generally want to go back to where I came from, to that spawn position. Okay. While I'm at it, I can still use the rear guns to shoot a little bit. And you see my two Des Moines there, both of them are now sitting next to each other, bow tanking. The first one is already dead because there are four enemy ships and you cannot withstand this kind of firepower when you're reversing only. You make yourself an easy target because uh, you're not so fast anymore, you cannot maneuver so well anymore. You, you limit your options. See, I can turn my ship around before I was going to A10. Now I'm heading actually more towards A6. And uh, it's absolutely no problem for me. But the Des Moines gets all the heat because she's the much easier target. That's another thing that you want to do um, when you're kiting, you point your bow away from the enemy so that you actually can also move away from the enemy because they will push into you and you kind of uh, don't make yourself this easy target. Here's the gamer turn from the Des Moines getting killed and now I will get all the focus from, from all these ships and now it's a one versus four situation even though the Moskva seems to disengage but nevertheless it will be one versus three situation. If I would be standing bow in here, I would just be focus fired as well and I would just die. What I try to do is keep my distance to the enemy ships and in a perfect world that would be outside of my concealment range. The concealment range on Thunderer and my current build is 12.3, of course only if I don't shoot and if I'm not set on fire. And I try to go dark here by already uh, putting out the fire because I'm taking a little bit too much damage and this is uh, the other thing so you want to kite you want to keep the closest enemy outside of your concealment range and then if you take too much damage and your damage control part is on cooldown and your heal is on cooldown you can just disengage by going dark and that's another advantage of kiting. You can disengage from the enemy if you keep your distance. And now I'm popping the heal. And it's time to open up fire again. I wish I could wait a little bit longer, but the Kufus will spot me any moment now. And then I can start shooting anyway. No? Well, I was almost detected, but I also want to reset the cap. I don't want to give her um, the cap so easily. And of course I want to burn her down. I will actually now focus on the Gursukur first, because I think it's better to focus on one ship. Also I don't have to wiggle around that, that much. But I'm shooting. So putting your stern towards the enemy, keeping your distance, ideally that would be just outside your own concealment range so that you can dictate when you want to shoot at others and when you are okay with others shooting at you. Yeah. Conserve your health. If your damage control party is on cooldown, then just take a break, go dark, stop shooting, and 
wait for everything to come back and then you can engage the enemy once more. Also every time I take a break here the enemy has nothing to shoot at and they have to then move their guns towards other targets and then I can uh, go back, I can come back into the battle and hopefully nobody will shoot at me anymore, right? Well except the Zhao because the Zhao has nobody else to shoot. Also note that right now I'm in a position where my team has won the other side. Uh, we lost two cruisers but so did they. It's five versus five and if you look I'm uh, very very north but if I go south then I see two ships exactly on the same line as me and two other ships uh, okay two squares uh, further to the west but this is actually a position that I want to be in because now I have uh, come together with the rest of my fleet and now it's not a one versus three anymore but it starts to be a five versus five and since we killed the core first now um, it's a five versus four and that's the idea um, the enemy will use this island range to uh, take cover from my main fleet but I am here in a position oh I switched to AP and the Zao didn't expect that I think got a little bit cocky there double citadel very nice I'm in a position where I can still put shots into the enemy and you see I'm still in a kiting position because there is a Montana and I haven't seen the Montana for a long time and I don't want to get surprised by the Montana unnecessarily that's why I still don't like to show too much broadside but maybe I already do I don't know and it's time to use damage control party again and maybe go dark and just heal back some more so one of the ideas of kiting is to not die and this is so important in this game if I play like the two Des Moines I would be dead by now already but because I do the kiting, I run away, I keep my distance so that I can choose uh, when to engage the enemy and when not to. Um, so I can control my hit points relatively well. And as long as I have enough hit points, I can also shoot back. Sometimes I have to go dark. And uh, now I can turn my ship around and re-engage. And me staying alive actually helped our team to win this battle. Yeah, that was kiting. Um, I hope it was interesting for you. So in short, turn your stern towards the enemy, especially when they have superior forces. Um, shoot over your shoulder. Keep, uh, possibly keep concealment range distance, your own concealment range. And then uh, dictate when you want to engage the enemy and when not. Try to shoot as much as possible, but keep an eye on your HP so that you don't die prematurely. Staying alive is so important in this game. I hope you were able to learn something, to um, learn how to kite correctly. And uh, yeah, that was Johnny Moneto. That's all for today. Have a good one and see you next time.